I mean, I would really uh, suggest that the midterm elections started last night or even through the day. Uh, yesterday, Kevin, how many, and if you don't know the answer, I get it, how many senators are threatened, as was Senator Corker of Tennessee? You know, I, I would say a handful. A you know, handful. I don't have an exact number no, for you, fine. but I'd say four works. to six. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, Senator Bob Corker, wow. I mean, this is someone who was on President Trump's vice presidential shortlist. This is someone who really is, as you mentioned, uh, a stalwart in the Senate, someone who has that caliber of an ability to work across the aisle uh, with the likes of people like Senator John McCain. I can't speak enough to his level of professionalism and stature within the upper chamber. Um, this is our morning must read, Kevin. So we picked it yeah. out uh, out of uh, actually USA Today. So this is something that we don't do very often. But this is what they say, and this is according to Eric Beach. Now he says, months after uh, voting for Trump's promising agenda, the American people are sick and tired of the do nothing Congress, which has consistently failed to deliver results for people in need of common sense, conservative reforms, and long overdue economic growth. Do you hear that when you speak to insiders? Yes, I think, yeah, you know, Eric hits the nail on the head. And, and yesterday, even in the Rose Garden at the president's press conference, reporting there, uh, the president really trying, uh, in, in effect, to, to move forward after a devastating loss on health care reform, another devastating loss on health care reform. And of course, now he turns his attention to tax policy. We're going to be hearing all about that in the coming hours. Tax Policy Day, we're, we're told, is going to be today. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the sources that I talk with, Francine, let me just be direct about this, are saying a Republican-controlled White House, a Republican-controlled House, a Republican-controlled Senate, th if they can't pass tax reform, what can a Republican-controlled government do? Right, but why has it been so difficult, Kevin? Is it, is it you know, the, the tweets, or is it something uh, more underlying, structurally kind of dysfunctioning? It's the differences within the Republican Party that have proven to be the top, top, top obstacle for lawmakers, both back but when we had Speaker Boehner uh, and now when we have President Trump. These divisions, Senator Ted mm -hmm. Cruz versus the establishment, uh, are so much still alive yeah. and well, as we saw last night in the great state of Alabama. Kevin, how do Democrats adapt and adjust to Senator McConnell's ugly Tuesday? Do they stay where they are? Do they go more progressive, more east-west coast? Or do they try to move to the center to become more centrist against Senator Presume more of Alabama. You know, I, I think that what we saw in the 2016 presidential cycle on the right, we're about to see on the left. Uh, there is a fight for the soul of the Democratic Party. Uh, there, this is a party without a leader. And I think that the people to watch are people like Senator, or I'm sorry, former Vice President Joe Biden uh, versus the more uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren wing of the Democratic Party. I think what I've noticed in the past couple of weeks here, at least from the left, uh, launched by Hillary Clinton's book tour, has been a concerted effort to isolate Bernie Sanders of Vermont.